So I'm on the final rebuild of Evangelion movie, at least until I finally get a hold of an English version of 3.0 plus 1.0, which God knows won't be won't be anytime soon. But now I finally I'm finally reached Evangelion 3.0. You cannot redo, and it's one of the most controversial Evangelion pieces of media out there. It's a completely new continuity, as 2.0 set up seeds of the story being different from here on out. Evangelion 1.0 was a purely, mostly, about let's say 95% recreation of the first six episodes or so of Evangelion, the original series. Ava 2.0 kind of skews off and becomes its own original thing at the end, and characters start to become different. Like, for example, Asuka Langley Shikinami now exists. Uh, she's not the same character as Asuka Langley Soryu, etc., etc. So now 3.0 is its own thing, and some people did not like it. Like, I feel like fan opinions on this movie are split down the middle. Either people like it or people don't like it. What do I think? I don't hate the movie, but there are some things that are really odd about the movie. Like, really, really odd. And I get that this, this movie feels more like a setup to Ava 3.0 plus 1.0 than its own like solid movie it feels way too much like a prologue to that movie and i think that kind of hurts it in the long run they drop a lot of terminology and stuff in this movie that will most likely come into play in 3.0 plus 1.0 but we don't know that at least yeah at least i ha i haven't seen the movie you know the movie's been in theater there's no version of it out on the internet so you know i haven't seen the movie i haven't seen 3.0 plus 1.0 yet so I haven't seen it, but I have. 3.0 feels way too much like setup, and I think that just really hurts the movie, you know. So let me, let me just. I'm gonna start from the movie from beginning to end, talking about it. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's a completely different continuity, so anything I say uh, will not translate over to like the original series, at least all too much. And I would say this: spoiler warning, you have been warned. If you have seen this movie already, please, you know, you can watch the video if you want to. If you haven't seen the movie yet, I'm just going to drop nothing but spoilers because I'm just going to talk about the entire movie. I'm, I'm just wrote down no, notes of the movie because I just seen it like 10 minutes ago for the, like the fifth time just to try to get it into my head. So the movie starts off with the the, the characters up above the high um, high atmosphere of, of the earth. Asuka's up there. Also, Mari's up there. And Asuka is fighting with an, fighting an angel with an anti-AT field. Now, the only characters we, you know, it, well, I guess, well, the only really things we've seen in the series of Evangelion before this uh, that had anti-AT fields were, I think, just the mass-produced Avas. I might be wrong. Um, but, yeah, so he's up in space fighting against these core blocks. I, they're, they're, I think they're, they call, they're still angels, but they're different kinds of angels. You know, they're like, they have something called core blocks now. And I'm wondering, okay, what's a core block? You know, it's, it's kind of weird. That like it's a, it's like it's like a new thing, so Oscar also has a new eye patch, and we know that she has that over the events from the previous movie. Though the thing is about the whole eye patch Oscar deal is that it makes more sense with if you have seen the original series. And what I mean about that is when Oscar gets her eye messed up at the end of Evangelion when she fights the mass produced Avas. It makes more sense that she only have the eye patch instead of just being straight up wrecked like she was, and uh, the um, in the previous movie because she just straight up bite down on her and it's kind of weird to expect that the only thing that was heard about her was her eye. So like it kind of evokes more. In it, but then again, her arm was also messed up too because her arm was split in half by um, by the mass produced Ava. So I guess it doesn't count either. But anyway, Mari also has her new own Ava Gellion unit. I forgot the name just starting off this video, but if I remember correctly, it's Ava Unit 8. It's 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 really really it's 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 really hard for me to remember off the top of my head. But anyway, um yeah, it's Ava Unit 8. And they're apparently looking for this weird odd shaped coffin box. It's like a cross, but it's like, like a it's like a bunch of coffin tombs like smashed together. And so Asuka gets attacked by the core block angel. That's what I'm gonna call it now, since I forgot. The, I, don't, I don't remember even it had a name for it, uh, the core block angel. Um, so like, yeah. Anyway, after all that, uh, she gets attacked, and Shinji is actually well, Shinji and Unit One are actually in the box, 
and then they attack the Korblock angel saving Asuka. So it cuts down to Karu on Earth after Asuka makes a re-entry back down to Earth. And it cuts to Karu saying that he's been waiting for Shinji. This is Karu, so he's been, you know, being mysterious, split off from the rest of the group since Ava, since the first movie. Since Ava uh, 1.0, he's been just standing off ready to do his thing. So he's finally coming into the picture. So right after that, Shinji gets salvaged from Ava Unit 1, apparently. And then they do some tests on him. They try to tell him, like, hey, you know who you are? Uh, do you know who, you know, where you are? Like, and they, just, they try to, like, you know, determine if Shinji is still human, apparently. And so after Shinji's brought in, he is met by a girl. Well, I mean, he's already, he already met her while she was rolling him into, like, the main one, uh, the main room of where uh, Masato is. And he is met by a young uh, girl who is named Sakura Suzuhara. Uh, now, she didn't reveal her name until, like, a little bit later in the movie, but I wanted to bring her up now since I wouldn't be calling her that girl. Um, yeah, Sakura Suzuhara is actually Toji's sister, and we hadn't actually seen Toji's sister in the flesh in the original OG Evangelion series, but we did see her in Ava 2.0 where it shows, like, a scene where Toji was hugging on his sister, and, you know, he was happy that she was well after being injured by uh, Shinji's Ava. I still don't understand how did... I still don't understand to this day how did... Toji's sister get involved with the whole Ava destruction thing? Like, I don't get that. I still don't get that because I may, I, I, I feel like I'm missing something here, but I don't know how she can get involved with those events, even in the OG series. But, you know, whatever. But anyway, when Shinji makes it to the main room of where he is now, he, everyone in the ship, like the people who are working on the ship, Masato, Ritsuko, everyone just looks at him with disgust. No one wants anything to do with him, and people are just, people just hate his ass. So Masato, now Captain Katsuragi, she is now a leader of this group known as Vile. I don't like pronouncing Wile because that sounds like Willy and that sounds like a person's name, but it's pronounced Wile or like the German word for soul, like how nerve is nerve and gehern is like, I think brain and sele is soul, you know, you know how it is. Um, yeah, everyone on the ship hates him outright. Um, so because nobody really told him yet as of now. And we know that Vile is a, is a group of mostly inexperienced people who are just working. They're mostly like civilians. They're people who just have that, haven't been gathered together in order to do this thing. Which, okay, that's fair. I mean, it's, it's weird that Masato is now captain, but why is she like that? So, moving on further from that. Shinji has this weird collar around his neck, and it's called the DSS Choker. I forgot what it's called. I didn't look up what it was called because they don't actually say it in the movie. I probably needed to look this. I probably needed to look it up. Uh, you know, I'm just going. I, I think if I remember correctly, it was a def. A de, what was it called? Deification shutdown system, something like that. It was more like a. I remember looking this up like years ago, and it's more like, hey, you can't. You know, don't don't become God, or we'll blow you up. <laughs> don't become God, or we'll blow you up with the choker. But anyway. Yeah, so uh, Masato kind of has control over the DSS choker, and it's not really, you know, he's not supposed to, you know, do anything, I guess. Like, it, 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 I'll explain it later. I'm not at the point of the movie yet to explain it. Uh, but anyway, so before Shinji can really get any answers because everyone's being vague and, you know, no one's really telling him anything. Everybody's just kind of looking at him with scorn and hatred and shit like that. Uh, Masato and her crew are now attacked by something known as the Nemesis series. Now, the Nemesis series doesn't really get anything said about in this movie. Uh, they don't really explain what the Nemesis series in this movie, but whatever. But f as, as much as I remember, they're like Evangelion units with... Uh, they're like the Mark IV Evangelion units. They're Evangelions with a number four in their name. If I remember correctly, the number four is like a signal of death because the number four in Japan, like in Japanese can be read as she, and she can also mean death. Don't... Quote me on that, but that's I, I think that's what I remember. But anyway, the core block Evangelion unit is like some kind of component of the Mark IV unit. It's like you know, they're they're, they're marked like four B, four C. Like they are weird kind of angel-ish Evangelions. Like it's it's like a it's like a weird mix. It's like <laughs> it's. Yeah, they're, they're Evangelion units. The core blocks were, were this, they were designated as angels, but now they're Evangelions. I guess they were possessed by angels. I don't freaking know. They don't they don't explain it. I had to look up what the hell the freaking 
um, the, the the Nemesis series were even. I didn't know what they were. I just thought they were something made by Nerve or somebody else. But no, it's just I thought it was like a special type of angel. But I know there's some kind of weird Evangelion kind of units. The core block apparently was its own Ava unit. So, eh. but anyway. Masato says that her goal is to protect Unit 1 at all costs, which means that, you know, Unit 1 is still out there somewhere because Shinji doesn't know that. After Shinji kind of went God mode back in 2.0, that was it. He kind of just, like, after he saved Ray, he kind of just essentially went to sleep and then woke up and, you know, he didn't know what's going on. So, VLA spends a very long time setting up their ship. They set up Wunder, the name of the ship now, apparently called the God Slayer by Ritsuko. And, you know, they Risco also explains their chances like, hey, uh, you, you know that this ship has a very zero percent chance of doing anything. Right. And Masato, you know, how Masato is she always takes those low chances. And it's like, well, it's not. I mean, it's a low chance where we can still do it. And she even mentions that if if they're testing to see if the ship is capable of deicide, anyone knows deicide is like, you know, killing a god. So, yeah, like <laughs> Yeah, like, it's already, already off the bars. Like, they got this giant ship. She calls it the God Slayer. Yeah. So, yeah, the ship spends the time to killing the, the new Nemesis Horizon series. They're dead after that. Shinji, before all that, Shinji actually wants to pilot Unit 1 so he can help out. He wants to help out Asuka. He wants to just help out. But no one essentially needs him. Like, Masato straight up tells Shinji that no one needs him, no one wants him, and for him to do nothing. So, yeah, Shinji is wondering why. Why would you not let me pilot the Ava? Like, like the thing about Shinji is that, you know, he was obviously reluctant to ever pilot the Ava because he feels like, you know, that's the only purpose he would have. But, you know, now he wants to pilot it to help out people, and Masato straight up says, no, you can't do it. Do nothing, Shinji. No one needs you. No one wants you. Just sit here and do absolutely nothing. Go away. So shit like that. So later on, after the whole uh, Nemesis Horizon beatdown shit, Risco explains to Shinji that Unit 1 is being used as a power source for Wunder, which is why they don't need him as a pilot anymore. There's no reason for him to pilot Unit 1 because it's a power source. So Shinji also now has a 0% sync rate with any Evangelion units, so he couldn't get an Ava to move even if he wanted to. Risco goes on to tell Shinji that the DSS Choker will essentially kill him if he tries to awaken. Now, for those who don't know what they mean, it's obviously when he went God mode back in 2.0, and that the Choker is a symbol of the distrust that they held for Shinji. Now, I have a few issues with that. On one hand, I get that they're trying to prevent Shinji from awakening in an Ava, but the only thing they really had to do was just prevent Shinji from getting into an Ava, you know? Like, they already had Shinji in their captivity, they didn't need the DSS choker. They could just keep him away from an Ava like they were already going to do. And then they said, oh, this symbol of this choker is a symbol of distrust that they had for you. But like, they treat Shinji as if he did this on purpose. They treat, that's what I don't like about Vile in this case. They kind of treat Shinji like, like I get what they're going for. They don't want Shinji to awaken an Ava, but like what they're, but, at the same time, like, it, it makes no sense because they could easily just prevent him from getting in near an Ava. To be honest, they only had two Avas on hand anyway. The one used by Asuka, Unit 2, and then Unit 8, the one used by Mari. So, like, there was no need to have, like, it, the, the DSS choker because that feels like overkill. Now, I get it. They could, they need as a plot point for later in the movie, but honestly, it feels a little bit mean to do such a thing to kill him if he tries to awaken it in the Ava. It's like, oh, if your emotions heighten too much, you'll just, you know, you'll kill you. But they didn't need to do that. You know, the DSS Choker, they didn't really need to put on Shinji. I just feel like that was a bit overkill and a bit, a little bit mean, a bit much, but whatever. Again, they could just keep him from an Ava. I mean, they couldn't because later on, I'll mention what happens later on, but anyway. So they dropped the bomb that Shinji has been apparently asleep for 14 years. He has been, like, after he had saved, like, uh, well, quote-unquote saved Ray. I'll get into that in a minute. But after he, quote-unquote, saved Ray after the events that caused their impact, he went to sleep, and he's been, like, stuck in Ava Unit 1 for over 14 years. Asuka arrives. She's pissed at him. And she, like, she's pissed at him for... 
I guess for whatever reason, I guess she's pissed at him for you know causing third impact. Again, she doesn't have like I get she'd be pissed at him for you know essentially him going berserk and crush her even though it wasn't his fault and for causing third impact. But honestly, people treat Shinji like shit in this movie. And I, I don't. It's not really fair because he didn't do it on his part on purpose. But anyway, uh, I mean, I guess he kind of did because like he said, he didn't give a shit about the world. He's all he wants to do is bring Ray back. So f everyone else. So I kind of get where they were coming from. <laughs> Um, but anyway, um, so Asuka mentions that she, Mari, and also Shinji, uh, they haven't aged in the time span, like in the 14 year time span. They're still kids. They're still 14 year old kids. Well, they're technically 28 year olds. And like, how old are they in this year? I forgot. I forgot how old the Evangelion characters are. I just forget. But the point is, they haven't aged in 14 years. They're essentially near 30 year olds in a in their 14 year old or 15 year old bodies. And Asuka mentions that they haven't aged in that 14-year time span was because of something known as the Curse of the Avas. We don't get an explanation about what the Curse of the Avas is, so it honestly makes no it, it makes no sense. I think they just did that as an excuse to say that, wow, my God, why didn't Asuka age? Why didn't Shinji age? Why didn't Mari age? You know, it, it seems like a bit... A bit of an ass pull to keep them their same age, you know. Like it, it honestly makes no sense. Like, oh wow, it's our Evangelions the reason we can't grow up because if we grew up we couldn't pilot our Avas anymore. You see what I mean? That just yeah, that just sounds stupid. Because if they grew up, they couldn't pilot their Avas anymore because they'd be at a certain age to even pilot their Avas. So, yeah, that's that was a real stretch to try to prevent them from explaining why they're the same age. But anyway, so Shinji believes that he thought he saved Ray. He thought he did. He did save. Ray kind of that's what he believed that was the last thing he saw before he went to sleep for 14 years no one explains anything to Shinji no one's telling him anything no one's giving him any answers it's just giving him the silent treatment and Shinji's understandably pissed I can't blame him I honestly can't blame Shinji for being pissed at people because they're just treating him like he's some kind of monster they're treating him like he's just he he, he did this willingly to hurt people and he didn't I mean granted yeah he did say F the world I'm saving Ray." But he, you know, like, Masato kind of egged him on to do it. She's like, yeah, do it, Shinji. Do it for yourself. You you want to do this for yourself. You go ahead, Shinji. This is what you want to do. And I just feel like that's a bit a bit much, you know. Like, honestly, I, I, again, I get, I can get why they would act like this. Because, like, you know, they don't want Shinji to go all, you know, God mode again. But at the same time, I'm like, well, damn, guys, you got to kind of have to, like... It's a little bit much, you know? Like, you're treating like shit, and it seems a little bit unfair in a certain sense. But anyway, no one explains anything to Shinji. It's honestly a little bit mean that he explains shit to Shinji. But anyway, they don't kind of, I guess, I guess technically they don't really have to. They don't really have to, and that kind of, you know, I, that is, you know. <laughs> but anyway, Shinji starts to hear Ray's voice. And he's like, oh, Shinji Kari, where are you? Shinji's like, oh, shit, guys, I hear Ray. You guys hear Ray? You guys, anybody hear Ray? And then she just bursts in, you know, bursts in to save him. Uh, well, a Ray. You need one person to save him. And what gets me is that this plot point kind of comes, like, 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 there's something later that happens in the movie that kind of ruins this part for me. But anyway, uh, Ray comes in. She saves uh, Shinji. And Rosara reveals the whole thing. She reveals that they're Vile, uh, that their group is meant to destroy all of Nerves' Avas. They're going to destroy Nerve. And she, she's not explain, She's not really giving anything to explain to Shinji to try to calm him down. Shinji's understandably pissed, and he straight up leaves. And I get that. I totally... I kind of get that. You know, I... <laughs> I kind of get that, man. Like, it, it just, it, I can't blame Shinji. If I was stuck in this weird world and no one told me anything, I would understandably get pissed and just get angry out of nowhere. And it just, it, it, but anyway, but anyway, uh, Unit uh, Zero saves Shinji. And Mari comes in to try to, you know, stop Unit Zero. She blasts um, Unit Zero's head clean off. And then they, apparently, this new Unit Zero is called the Vessel of the Atoms. And then apparently that his head can regenerate even though Ray should have been in the cockpits, in the head cockpit. So, like, 
they say the, the name Vessel of the Atoms a lot in this movie, and you still have no freaking idea what the hell it even means. Like, even, like, I have to look up shit and understand what it means, but I'm not, I'm not gonna look up anything for this movie. I'm going to keep it clean as if I've heard it from the movie. I wrote down my notes. I watched this movie a good amount of times to know what the hell's going on here, and it just, it, it, mm, it, it just, it, yeah, I got none. But anyway, so... After all that, Shinji gets taken away, and then obviously there's the DNS choker. Masato could just easily press a button and just kill Shinji right then and right there. But she could, she, right as Shinji got out of the range, she just couldn't bring herself to do it. She was like hesitating to push the button and kill Shinji. So you can tell that Masato still cares for Shinji in some sense, but it's not like it's more like a like a vague like yeah she still cares and she wouldn't kill him outright because that would just be completely out of character to Masao to show up kill Shinji like that. But I, I'm glad they put that scene in because it, it made like Masao's been like nothing but just straight up mean this entire time and it's kind of it's kind of effed up. So anyway they um so they are taken back to Nerve HQ. The Nerve HQ and the Geo Front are just wrecked now right it's just completely wrecked. Uh, Shinji is met up with Gendo again. Gendo now has like this visor. He has like a visor like Keo Lawrence had, the dude who was the chairman of Sele back in the original Evangelion. So I guess kind of Shinji, I guess Gendo kind of takes this place. Gendo says, hey, look, bro, there's this new Evangelion unit called, uh, you, you, you're going to be in, uh, the new pilot along with this guy, Karu. I'm gone. So like, it's so weird. Like, it's like, first of all, now Ava's more, um two pilots now. And, like, there's this... A Ava, okay, so it introduced later Ava Mark 13, right? Which is a double entry plug system, which means two pilots can get inside the Ava and make it move. And I thought it would be a weird ass pull, but then I thought about, yeah, it's been 14 years. You know, Ava technology must have advanced further than that since then. So I can kind of get that. Um, but anyway, Shinji meets this meets Rei. Uh, Rei has now a black plug suit. Shinji tries to talk to her. And... The fans call this Ray Ray Q because, you know, nobody knows what the hell to call her. Um, so Ray Q here, um, she's a lot different from the Ray that we normally know. Now Shinji believes that he saved Ray. Like seeing this new Ray, he finally believes like, oh yeah, I, I told you guys I saved Ray. I freaking told you I saved Ray. But Ray mentions um, being very vague. She has no ideas who she is. She, well, I mean, she doesn't. Really, she only really acts on orders. She um, she speaks way less than OG Ray. She doesn't really know who Shinji is or much of anything. Like Shinji even brings up some stuff, and she has no idea what they are. And Shinji gets kind of nowhere with this new Ray. He believes that that's still Ray that he that he saved her, but it's not the real Ray. Like it'll come to later that that's not even the real Ray that you know he uh, he saved uh, saved back in 2.0. He didn't save Ray. And all this Ray Q does is just she sits around, wait for her orders, and calls it a day. And that's kind of just oof. <laughs> but Shinji doesn't know that as of yet. But anyway, so Shinji later meets up with Karu again. And they play the piano with him, and they commence the whole gay piano scene that they, people love to bring up. Like The only thing that people bring up about 3.0 is the gay piano scene. But... I like it in a way that it brings Shinji his own new friend. Yeah, this, the piano scene is really, really gay. But, yeah, they, they lay it on thick with that. But it also gives Shinji his own good friend here. Because everyone else hates him. Everyone everyone else either hates him or doesn't know him or wants to be vague about shit. So, you know, having Shinji and Karu together as friends is a good thing to keep him grounded. So Shinji decides to later go check on Ray Q. Uh, he keeps leaving her books because, you know, he knows old Ray used to love to read a lot. So he goes on. He's like, hey, Ray, you know, here's your books. I'll let you, you know, can you read these books? You know, yada, yada. So she, 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 you know, he leaves books for her every periodically, you know, blah, blah. And he goes back to his room. So later on, and for whatever God forsaken reason, for whatever reason, this, this is a completely random scene, right? Shinji... Uh, has like this little thing where they just like they open like a little slot and just passes him stuff. Like earlier in the movie, they passed him some you know paste food so he can eat, and um, so like they passed some clothes through him, and Shinji tries to put the clothes on, and they're like you know really um uh really too big for him, and then he looks on the uh, looks on the tag of the shirt, and then he says it's it, it says Toji Suzuhara, so the clothes that Shinji was sent were Toji's clothes. And, like, I'm sitting here, like, what? 
like where did this scene come from you know it just came flat out of nowhere and I, I i still don't get this purpose of the scene but if i were to uh think about it more the scene afterwards shinji does talk about his old classmates Takaru, how you know he, he doesn't know where they are now how they used to you know hang out together where they are and so I guess the scene was to force Shinji to talk about Toji, but if that was the case, I feel like that's really a really roundabout way to going about it. It's it's kind of stupid. Like say, like, hey, look, somehow we have Toji's clothes. Somehow we gave him to Shinji, and somehow it led Shinji to talk about um, you know his uh, friends to Karu. And I just feel like that's a little bit of a, a bit too much to try to have find a contrived reason to have Shinji talk about his old classmates. Yeah, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's kind of dumb, <laughs> but you know, whatever. It, eh. But anyway, after all that, uh, so Shinji's wondering, like, man, what happens in the four, past 14 uh, years? You know, what happened to all that? And so Karu says, okay, fine. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm going to, you know, tell you what happened in the past 14 years. So he goes to show him this weird site where there's just this giant moon shaped object. It looks much like the black moon slash Lilith's egg from back in the end of Evangelion. It has the same markings on it when the souls left in the movie, when like the Shinji reject instrumentality and the souls return to Earth or return wherever they were. And um, it, it doesn't look exactly the same as Lil's egg. It's like lighter and stuff like that, but it still has the same markers nonetheless. So, Kaoru tells Shinji that this is the result of the third impact. He explains that all the shit, all the messed up stuff, like the whole world's kind of desolate now, the moon's there. That's all because uh, Shinji caused the third impact. So, he explains, so Kaoru explains that the human instrumentality project is something of like like a divine ascension of humanity using the fruit of life like they are the third pack's purpose oh, sorry my bad the human instru in instrumentality's purpose is to ascend hum humans into some kind of godly state if that's why i'm reading it between the lines car uses a lot of weird vague terminology when he's explaining the human instrumentality project to shinji but essentially it's going to make these weak people stronger or like that. Uh, it send humans out of their human coils and make them something of the divine being of sorts. It's so like Karu also drops the bomb that Shinji was the one that called the third impact, or how he explains some people call it the near third impact, but it's still the third impact because later in the movie they call something else the fourth impact, but I'll get into that in a minute. And understandably, Shinji isn't taking it well. He isn't taking it well with the fact that he caused all this. And he was already, you know, going through a lot of shit because people were already hating him. But now that he hears that he's the reason that the world is the way it is now, I can't blame Shinji for being understandably scared. So, after all that, Shinji goes back, um, goes back, uh, new, like, the hallways of Nerve. And he meets up with, well, he doesn't meet up with Fuyusuke. He kind of just walks past Fuyusuke, who was just sitting there. So, him and, uh, Shinji and, sorry, Shinji and Fuyusuke, they have a game of Shogi, and Fuyusuke drops like a bunch of bombs to Shinji about shit. So he reveals uh, the whole story about Shinji's mom, that uh, Shinji's mom, now called Yui Ayanami, in the original series, obviously we know that her name was Yui Ikari, so that technically means that Shin Gendo's original name was Gendo Ikari, and not Gendo Rokubungi, who he took the last name of Ikari when he married um yui it's it, they didn't have to do that but i i, I uh, whatever it doesn't really change anything much so this yui ayanami uh he explains that she uh she's now at the control center of ava unit one and that the real ray's soul is also um, in unit one as well because shinji it's if i remember correctly at the end of um end of 2.0 when shinji shinji was obviously in unit um uh, and unit uh two so that yeah, unit one when he went god mode when he went in to salvage ray's soul out of the tenth angel my guess is that he brought it into himself while he was in unit one and that's why her soul was in there so yeah ray's soul is also in unit one along with his mom's soul uh and then now the purpose of and is also uh when he sees a picture of ray he sees that ray is, looks exactly like yui and it's funny to me and then like <laughs> and then and Fuyusuke explains like yeah this is all part of Gendo's plan Gendo's doing all this it's all part of his master plan all of this was his big huge master 
10 brain plan that Shinji, you're not, you're part of it. You're part of my master plan. So, yeah, Fuyusuke leads off that. I guess Fuyusuke just, see, it's it's kind of debatable if Fuyusuke did that out of the kindness of his heart that he wanted to just Shinji to know, or that it was a part of Gendo's plan, because apparently everything's part of Gendo's goddamn plan. Gendo is more of an evil mastermind than he was in the original series. He planned shit, but he feels like he's like the straight up evil bad guy. He's like, oh shit, dude, I'm evil, blah, 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 blah. Like, it, it feels like just like crazy. Like, ugh. hopefully, in, you know, Ava, uh, three, uh, thrice upon a time, will know what the hell Gendo's all about. But anyway, so Shinji's already fragile mind <laughs> is messed up even further by this revelation. It's messed up by the t- um, Like, it's like, not only he knows that his mom is on side unit one and Ray didn't get saved, which kind of broke what he had left. Not only that his mom didn't get saved, he wrecked the world. The clinging onto his idea that he saved Ray is gone. And now he's trapped 14 years into the future where nearly everyone hates him because of it. And yeah, Shinji isn't doing so hot. And I can't blame him, dude. Like the guy's just already had to suffer through a bunch of shit and now he just realized that all he's done was for nothing he destroyed the world for essentially nothing yeah it's kind of effed up so shinji goes to meet ray q again like he's like you know going to confront her because it's like okay i want to know if you're the real ray or not so here's what gets me in the scene that like shinji's been leaving books about her in the entire movie so in this scene shinji picks up all the books right he picks up all the books that he's left uh ray ray q and then, like, he stacked them all together, like, like a really high stack, like a, like a lot of them. And then waited till Ray Q came in and then dramatically pushed them over to make it, to make the scene more extreme when he was wondering how Ray Q wasn't really, um, the real Ray. He just did all do it dramatically. And I just find that the most, I find it just the funniest thing in the movie because, like, it, it, Shinji didn't need to do that. And plus, the stack was way higher than he was. So there was no way he could have stacked all those books in the way he was, did. So I don't know what the hell that point of that scene was. I don't know. A weird, a weird design, a weird scene choice. So, so Ava Mark III gets revealed. It gets revealed. They pull it out of the thing they were creating it in. And Ava Mark III looks like nearly identical to Unit 1. Just bigger and it, the differences become a lot more crazier later uh kaoru manages to convince shinji to fight in ava and, and shinji did, shinji's like dude like i already played in this ava i kind of i already fought in this ava i kind of don't want to do it again because you know if i do it i'll just why i do all this kaoru manages to, I'm sorry, i keep burping i'm sorry sorry anyway kaoru mentions convince shinji to pilot with him in ava unit 13 and kaoru even takes the DSS choker off of Shinji's neck. He apparently knows how to take it off, and then he put it on himself. Again, there is nothing to explain why Kaoru can do that, but early in the movie, Kaoru was just able to fix Shinji's broken um, music player. So, like, I, I'm, I'm not going to question it because apparently Kaoru can just fix anything, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. So, anyway, the goal for Shinji and Kaoru is to pilot Unit 13 so they can go down to Central Dogma to retrieve two spears, the Spear of Longinus and the Spear of Cassius, and that with those two spears, they can use it to save the world. Now, there's a lot of problems with whole Kaoru's major big plan. Kaoru believes that getting these spears will save the world or just something. He tries to convince Shinji to do so, but at the same time, it's like there's a lot of vagueness to it. There's nothing else like more to it that you would know about. How was this going to save the world? How's it going to do it? No one knows. And also, Unit Zero with along with uh, Ray Q tags along with them. Shinji even brings up like, oh man, like Shinji brings up like she's not even a real Ray. Why she's even with us? And then Ray Q starts to question her own identity just from hearing Shinji say that. And it, it, again, it feels kind of kind of out of nowhere, despite Shinji trying to challenge Ray early in the movie. It just feels kind of out of nowhere that one line from Shinji kind of just made Ray question about who she is. It, it just feels a little bit out of nowhere. But anyway, so like, Vile knows of Unit 13's awakening. Like, it, it, it waking, not, not awakening, like, God mode. I mean, like, just waking up to be activated. I don't understand what kind of crazy systems that Vile uses to even detect the activation of an Ava unit. Because here's the thing. I mentioned earlier that out of nowhere, unit, uh, out of nowhere, unit, uh, 
unit check, unit zero, the vessel of the atoms, quote unquote, it broke in to Vile's uh, wonder ship. And I'm sitting there like, they didn't detect that earlier. It just broke in. And then I'm like, they didn't detect that. So how the hell did they, they detect Unit 13's awakening? Like, there's a big gap in logic there. So anyway, so anyway, as they were heading down in the central dogma, Kaoru and Shinji sees a bunch of red corpses lying the walls as they're falling down. Kaoru mentions that they're, the corpses are people who have quote unquote fell short of infinity or uh, as some people know it the failures of infinity again we don't know what they are but knowing how uh, Kaoru brings about the human instrumentality project like it feels like in this movie they're trying to meld human instrumentality with the events of the third impact kind of together in this weird mold because if I were to think about the those who fell short of infinity that sounds like what human instrumentality was they're ones that didn't make it to divine ascension like the human instrumentality was meant to do so I don't know how the hell did this get involved with Third Impact, you know? Like it, it's like they're trying to meld these two together, and I'm like, if this is what it feels like, you know? Like it's just yeah. But anyway, Karu, Ray, and Shinji finally make it down to the lowest level of Central Dogma, and the whole floor is full of skulls and broken machinery, along with a giant corpse of Lilith. They also meet Ava Unit Mark Six down there, and Kaoru mentions that Ava Unit Mark Six was supposed to be autonomous. And again, I have no freaking idea what Kaoru is aiming for in this case because, like, I don't remember anything about Unit Six, and I might my brain might be just uh, drawing a line here, but for the life of me, I do not remember anyone saying anything about Ava Unit Mark Six. Like I'm used to now to Ava units coming out of freaking nowhere now because of these movies, but at the same time, like what the hell is Unit Six? What, <laughs> like what is, like where does come out of nowhere? But like, if I remember correctly, seeing it, it was the very it was the unit that Karu showed up in at, um, in at the end of the first Evangelion movie. It's like an, it's like an unfinished. Uh, version of it because like if i remember correctly it was the same unit that was being built on the Tagda base on the moon back in ava 1.0 and then uh, uh karu gets in it on ava 2.0 and then he starts the third impact in 2.0 so i get it but i have no idea how it ha like how it ended it down there in dogma and what happened to it you know like, it, it, I remember them mentioning that the uh, Art Mark Six was, like, the true Evangelion. It was supposed to, like, fulfill some kind of covenant with Lilith. And that Fuyusuke even mentions that they were, that Sailor were trying to create a real god using Unit Six. Again, I, I, I don't I don't get it, but Unit Six does play a part in this movie. So, I guess that was the purpose of it. Anyway. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's probably autonomous. Which I find weird. If Unit Six was meant to be autonomous, why is Kaoru the one piloting it? You know, like, that's what... It, I don't know. Maybe they may explain the next movie. They need to explain some shit. There's some shit that happened in the 14 year gap in this movie, and they need to explain it like badly. But anyway, once they get to the spheres stuck inside Lilith's body, Karu notices something that is really off. He explains that the sh two spheres, uh, Longinus and Cassius, have shifted in form to the point that they match each other, to the point that they're one and the same. Uh, so. So Karu gets confused. He's like, "What the hell's going on?" But then it's like he's like, "I realize it now." And he yells out the word "Lilin," and then he cuts to Gendo gazing upon some weird giant head of Ray, full of sitting up, or it could be a head of Ray or Yui. I have no freaking idea. I want to say it's a Ray head because we've been seeing a lot of Ray heads at the end of end of Ava. You know, her head fell off the giant naked Ray and fell to the earth. Yeah, that's why I want to believe. That's what I want to believe that it is. But you know, whatever. But anyway, Gendo looks upon this giant ray head on top of a bunch of failures of affinity, which I, again I don't know the purpose, but whatever. I'm, I'm just letting I'm just letting things go at this point. So yeah, he gets uh, Kara gets angry. He's like Lilin, and he goes to Gendo, and he's and then he finally discovers the reason why the spirits are the same, but we don't know that. So Asuka finally drops down the dogma, and she has a showdown with Shinji. Ava unit, uh, Ava Mark Thirteen also has like these weird bits things, you know, bits like like how some Gundams had, like they have like these things, like these little autonomous things that fight for them on their behalf, like, like that kind of shit. Uh, so they, I guess, it deploys AT fields and protects him from being attacked because apparently Mark Thirteen doesn't have an AT field. I again, I'll get into that in a minute. And to me, it feels weird seeing Shinji and Asuka fight each other. 
Like, it's so weird. Like, I've always never thought about this was going to happen ever. Like, they're fighting against each other, which is pretty crazy. Um, but anyway, Mar Mari mentions that she liked Ray's Q's original version when she comes to, um, comes to meet her. Now, I'm guessing that the only time I could ever mention, even know this, people made some really big brain theories about, oh my god, you mean the Mari from the end of the Evangelion manga? No. Everybody kept thinking that was the, like she was talking about Yui, but I don't think she was talking about Yui. That, that, that's, that's, that's a big stretch trying to tie the manga into this. My guess is that she was talking about the time that OG Ray saved Mari from being blown up by Into My back in 2.0 in the fight against the 10th Angel. That's my guess. Because that was the only time Mari met Ray at that point. So, Karu warns Shinji not to take the spears. Shinji, like, Shinji isn't having it. Karu mentions, like, dude. There are not the spears, Shinji. We need to go back. I don't like this. This isn't right. Don't, don't, don't get those spears. And Shinji's all like, "Well, dude, I, 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 I'm, I need to get these spears. I, I have to save the world. I messed up everything. The world needs to be saved." I, I feel like people have like a problem with Shinji being so desperate and not listening to what Karu was saying. On one hand, I can get it. I, on one hand, I can get why people would have be upset with Shinji, uh, not straight up listening and being stupid enough to like do that. And I, I, I kind of uh, get that. I kind of get why people have complaints about it. I personally can understand why Shinji would be so desperate to save the world. Even It's even in the title of the movie. Like, he's desperate to save the world, but he can't do it. You're not able to. All you can do is just change the course of events. You can't just turn back time. That's why the title of the movie is called You Cannot Redo. You can't change. You can't redo these events. You're stuck just moving on about your life and, you know, yada, yada. So, yeah, I can understand why people would be pissed at Shinji for not listening to what Karu was saying, but honestly, I mean, it, I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of indifferent towards it. Like, I kind of get why people would be pissed about that, but on the other hand, I'm like, eh, I'm, I'm already exhausted by a bunch, bunch of things in this movie. I'm kind of don't feel like arguing with Shinji at this point. So, as I mentioned before, Ava Mark 13 doesn't have an AT field. They, Mari tries to land two shots on him, and like the, the shots go straight through uh, Mark 13, and it's just. <laughs> It's just like, yeah, like it, it's, there's no, um, it's, uh, it, does, it goes right through. And I just find it hilarious. Like, I get, I guess the bits, like the little autonomous bit things it had, it was the AT, it had AT fields, while the unit itself doesn't have AT field. And like, I'm just like, uh huh, that's, like, it's, okay, whatever. <laughs> so, March 6th is later revealed to be the 12th and final angel, right? Is revealed to be the twelfth and final angel. It takes the form of a like. Okay, okay. One more thing I gotta explain. What the hell? Like, I'm still trying to f make sure I got this right. Like, apparently it's the twelfth and final angel. But I try to do research on it, and apparently I didn't get much of it in a way. Like, it's it says it's the presence of the twelfth angel is inside the unit. Right? It's like in like some kind of weird blue particle s gross shit uh, in the form of the angel. So, like, after, like, it gets decapitated by Mark, Unit Mark, um, Ava Mark 9, there's nothing left of it in there. And I'm like, okay, fine. There's, the, okay, the, the thing is, the, it's the 12th angel, the 12th angel's out of the picture. Um, so, it takes a bunch of a form of a bunch of wire string things. I can't describe it. They're like a bunch of metal pipes or metal spikes fused together into one giant thing. And it has revealed that the angel is nothing but core. See, the thing about the angel, like, Aven, uh, Evangelion and the angels is like, you know, oh, you had to kill the, the shorted core, kill them. But, no, all the angels are starting to be nothing but core now. I'm like, well, damn, guys, come on. You're making this harder or you're making this easier? Like, what the hell you want from me? Also, uh, taking, it also takes, the, in its core form, it also takes the shape of uh, Ray at certain points. And Ray begins to question her purpose. It's like, oh, shit, what, who am I? You know, what, what am I, what do I do? Yada, yada. So, Later on in the movie, Karu then reveals that he is the first angel and that he was defeated by the 13th. Now, when I was originally watched, like, he was defeated by the 13th. Right. So, he mentions explicitly, oh, I was the, uh, what, what did he say exactly? I'm trying to remember what he said exactly. He's like, oh, I'm the, um, I'm the first angel and that I was utterly defeated by the, uh, the, thir uh, the 13th. And it maybe it, it confused me for a bit, right? It confused me because, like, okay, okay, Kara being the first angel, I could accept that, maybe. But then he says he was defeated by the 13th. 
So I'm like, okay, my, my first thought was Gendo. My the immediate first thought was Gendo because Mark Six was classified as the twelfth angel because he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't talking about Mark Six, right? So my guess is if he was referring Gendo, so then I thought I was like, but that makes no sense because Mari mentioned that the thirteenth angel doesn't exist. It shouldn't exist, and then it comes back to Gendo and talking to Sele. But no, Karu also mentions that he is he. Not only is he's the first angel. But he's also the thirteenth angel. At the same time, he mentioned earlier that oh, the beginning and the ending are one and the same. I'm the first and the thirteenth angel at the same time, and I'm like, what? Again, it makes no sense, honestly. Like I try to like, like I try to watch the movie again to try to figure this out, and it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't help. Like thrice upon thrice upon a time is out, so I don't know if they explain that. Honestly, I really don't want. I, I can just read spoils all day long. But uh, I kind of don't want to. But yeah, he, he he explains that not only is he the first angel, he is also the thirteenth angel. And I thought, okay, uh, maybe he's not the thirteenth angel. Maybe it's the it's the uh, Ava Unimark thirteen. Like that that was that was my thought. Like it, 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 that was the first thing that came to my head. Well, not well. The Gendo thing came first, but like that was the second thing that came. I was like, okay, fine, whatever. Kara is both the first and thirteenth angels. Whatever, I don't care anymore. So yeah, what the hell? Whatever. Anyway, so Shinji commences third impact. Well, sorry, my bad. Fourth impact. Shinji commences fourth impact because the chamber is a guffer opening, and uh, Shinji begins to go god mode yet again. Well, third smart mark thirteen. Ascends the God mode, and for whatever reason, Mari calls it a straggler atom, and I have no idea what that even means. It's like, oh, it's a straggler atom, and I was like, what? Is it? Why does everybody keep throwing the name Adam around, bro? Adam's not even in this continuity because like Gendo doesn't have him. Instead, the uh, the key of Nebuchadnezzar, they called the new unit Mark Six an um, vessel of the atom, and now straggler atom. Okay, whatever. God damn it, I hate this movie. Anyway. <laughs> So God Mode Mark 13 is attacked by Vile. And once again, Unit Zero is called the Vessel of the Atoms. Ritsuko says that Unit Zero wants Unit One and that it is the original master of wonder. And I just I I, I have no idea at, at this point. So they mentioned that Unit Zero wants Unit One for some reason and that it is the original master of Misato ship the Wunder. I legitimately have no idea what what's going on anymore. Just it, it, they're just throwing shit now, and I feel like they're just doing that shit to explain later in the three point plus one point But yeah, that I, I don't know anymore. I don't know anymore. This movie's really, really bad with this with with being its own movie. <laughs> uh, anyways, C, uh, Sele also manages to take control of the vessel of the atoms. And then when the vessel of the atoms unit zero gets onto one uh, to wonder, it takes control of that ship as well. And again, I don't know. It's still like it's still through like the angel. I, I don't I don't freaking know. Moving on, moving on. So now Asuka is able to unleash the beast mode of unit two. And as I mentioned before in my 2.0 video, what is beast mode? What is Beast Mode? And it's even it's even weirder in this movie because Asuka's version of Beast Mode takes the form of a cat. It has paws in the it has paws on the in everything and tail. And I'm like, what? The, I think it even has ears if you look close enough. And I'm like, why? What the? Fr like Asuka had like a cat hat on earlier, like a hat, like a hat with cat ears on it. I have no idea what's going on in this movie. I don't know why Unit Two's Beast Mode is a goddamn cat. I, I've lost all, all, I've lost all comprehension. This is dumb. Like the near the end of this movie, shit is just happening. Shit is just happening, and no one like throughout this entire movie, shit just happens, and no one explains it. I'm not even confident that this shit will be explained in 3.0 plus 1.0. I have zero faith. There's no way, no way. But if it does, I'll be surprised. But I, I don't know, man. So now. Karu, now he's revealed as the both the 13th and the first angel. He can just apparently straight up close the gates of Guff. If I remember, like, if I remember correctly, that was kind of what happened the first time. Because at the first time, he threw a spear of Longinus at Shinji. 
which canceled out third impact. So my guess that when he stabbed himself, like stabbed Unit 13 with both spears, that's how he was able to close the gates of Guff. So it kind of relates back to that movie. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I guess stabbing an awakened Evangelion is meant to stop the gates of Guff from opening up. And then Kyle Lair gets his head blown up by the DSF choker. Like, I don't know. I mean, he, I don't know if why he had to put it on, but I, I, I guess I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. So, um, sorry. Once again, getting those all like, oh yeah, everything's going to my and Sele's plans. Everything everyone is doing is exactly going to my plan. It, 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 it seems a bit extreme. Like, I know original Evangelion, they had to like really pull some strings in order to get events that were to happen in the series. But at least back then, it made sense to me. Like, you know, all the events that Shin, uh, Gendo and Sele were orchestrating following the Dead Sea Scrolls. It made sense that some of these things would be plausible enough to happen. In this series, shit is just happening and they're just calling it, oh shit, my plan's, my plan's going on. Like, they're just, they're stretching it so hard to believe that they're like complete and other masterminds that it just becomes, it comes off as like, really? You mean tell me that there's all these things you've done to count for were going to happen? You mean, like, it, it, it just, eh. I mean, it made more sense back in the original series. I just, I, I don't know what they're doing here. <laughs> so, so after the entire event happens, Shikara was dead, Shinji's depressed, Asuka had to forcibly eject Unit 2, Mari had to eject her unit, like everyone else is just doing their shit. Um, you know, uh, Asuka arrives uh, to take a now even more depressed Shinji away, like even more depressed than he originally was. He's like end of Evangelion depressed now because now he just like, he killed, like, he, Kara was dead, so now Shinji's like, you know, beat bot depressed, and Rei Q arrives. So Asuka calls Rei Q from the first batch of the Ayanami types. And they did mention earlier in the movie that she is part of the Ayanami series. Apparently the Ray clones now have an Ayana I have a name to them, which I just find the funniest thing ever. Uh, and now for whatever reason, Asuka's like Asuka has like this sensor thing, right? Where she was trying to detect if anyone was ever to come back to him. Like, you know, they want the everyone to ship to come to them, pick them up. And she says that, oh man, you know, we get we need to get to a closer area so Lillian can find us. And I was like, why did Oscar call them Lillian? Like, what the shit is happening? It's like, wh I don't know what's happening, dude. They're, 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 this, this. And then the movie ends with Oscar, Shinji, and Ray Q going on their way. Again, again, I've been saying this. This movie is nothing but set up. You know what I mean? Like, it's literally nothing but set up. Like, they, they, they're doing the entire movie, and maybe all of this will lead into 3.0 plus 1.0. I don't freaking know. But that's the end of the movie, though. That's honestly legit the end of the movie. I have no idea what to even say at this point. Um, I can uh, say that this movie wasn't... I can see why people had complaints about this movie. Because it just, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel right. There's some, it's like, it's like, it's like they wanted it to be a movie that has stakes and on top of that lead into some, some another movie. But like, there's a lot of holes missing. They mentioned Vessel the Atom so many times. They do a bunch of other shit that doesn't make any sense. They they do a bunch of contrived things to try to connect it back together. Somehow, Kaoru is both the first and final angel. Like, the core blocks are Evangelion units. Somehow, I guess that the Nemesis series was created by freaking Gendo and Nerf. So that's my guess. I don't, again, I don't, I don't know. Like, I... The hatred towards Shinji. What happened in the 14 years that led up to the movie? Like it, it just felt weird, man. Like there's, there's something about this movie that just feels off. Like again, I'm waiting for like an English version of 3.0 plus 1.0. But if, if the if the full sub version of the movie leaks, I don't feel safe making a vo movie a video about it yet because I want an English release to come out first. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I have mixed feelings with the movie. Like, e e like movies like End of Evangelion, I can feel confused about, and then like I still like the movie, but I don't even know what to feel about this movie even till now. Like, it's no matter how many times I watch this movie, it just feels weird, you know? Like, it feels there, it's like pieces are missing that they won't explain until later. It's like a puzzle piece, but with a bunch of puzzle pieces in the middle are still missing, and it it it, it sucks, honestly, because. This movie could have been all right. I don't hate the movie. It's just like, it's not a very 
it's 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 I don't know. It's a pretty looking movie. I'll give it that. Like the haunting and just overall imagery of the movie looks really good. Backgrounds look really good. The desolate nature of the world looks really good. The action scenes look really good. Uh, Ava Unit 2 turning into a cat was really, really just pushing what they what they can do with Evangelion units. Like I told myself earlier that, hey, maybe a double entry plug for Ava Unit 13 wasn't so bad. But having Unit 2's beast mode turn into a cat that's really with paws and everything that's really pushing my everything i want to believe like that's pushing it really hard and i'm, I'm i don't think i can forgive that one ava unit turning into a cat was really stupid and i never gonna give that one not the worst thing but why you know like why i i uh. but yeah shinji act you know shinji was decent Shinji what like was understandably shooken and screwed up throughout the whole movie. I didn't like how Vile was portrayed because it did feel like they were a little bit too mean on Shinji. Like the like I get they were pissed about all the shit that happened prior, and yeah, Masato did egg Shinji on to try to you know say, hey, do this for yourself, Shinji. But to be pissed at him at the end of the day because of it, like I know she's been hardened over the 14 years about dealing with nerve and all the other crazy shit. But honestly, they didn't, they they didn't have it. They didn't explain why Vile separated from nerve. They didn't explain how Vile separated from Nerve. They didn't explain anything. Not in the movie. I don't know if they did that in supplementary, supplementary material. Honestly, I don't know. But I feel like that shouldn't mess with my you know, perception of the movie because like I'm like it, it'll still be the same. Like I have no idea. It doesn't matter how many stuff, how much stuff I look up about the movie. I try to like understand some shit. Like the only f- understanding that I gain from Vile is that like it's an organization. That they're they're banding together to prevent any future, you know, impacts. No more impacts. They apparently that the government, the nerve disbanded after the third impact, and you know the rest of the nerve members that wanted to come together to Masato, they've banded together to create Vile, and like I, I don't know, I don't know how they managed to create Wonder. I don't know how they managed to use Ava Unit 1 as a, pow- a power source. I don't get that either. Why is Unit 1 a power source? You know, like, are they, like they call it the God Slayer, so my only idea of what that is is that they used... A- like, okay, so Ava Unit 1 ascended, right? It ascended, so they're using the godly power of the Unit unit 1 to ascend, like, to use in Wunder to make use his power? I don't know. But, you know, with that, Wunder can deploy an AT field and everything. So that's my guess. They're using, like, the Ava's powers in Wunder. So technically, it's like a like a proxy Ava, but as a ship, if that's my guess. I don't know. It honestly doesn't matter. It honestly doesn't matter. I I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this movie's weird. Even after all this time, this movie's weird. It's not like I hate it. Like, a bunch of people, utter, a bunch of people hate it. But like during the latter half of the movie, shit just happens, you know. Like again, I don't like the I don't like Vila's portrayal. I don't know any of them by name. Like I would have to look them up, and I'm not doing that for this video because there's no point. You don't see much of them. I know that characters like Hugo is still there. I know character like it, it, but it ain't the same. You know what I mean? You know Ibuki's still there, Ritsuko, uh, Masato. Like they're all still there, uh, but it, it it just feels a bit weird. You know what I mean? I don't know what to think at this point, but <laughs> um, yeah, this movie's weird. This movie's weird. I don't hate it like other people, but holy shit, there's some problems. Uh, I will say something positive about the movie, though. Shirosagi Yuksu's music essentially like was like the best thing about the movie, other than like the actual animation, the CGI, and the shit that was looked really good. Shirosagi Yuksu's music—he has the best. Like this, this, this movie has the best lineup of tracks in the entire series. Like betrayal, carnage, dark defender. He even did redid from Beethoven's knife, uh, God's gift, God's messenger. Uh, what was this? It will mean victory. I think keep your head above the mayhem. No, keep your head above the mayhem wasn't part of this movie. No, it wasn't. Um, uh, what was that? Some other movie. Uh, Return to Ash, uh, scarred and battled, the anthem. Uh, what was the other movie? The Ultimate Soldier, The Wrath of God and All Its Fury, Trust, and I think that was all the, I think that was all the, uh, 
all the, all the songs that I really liked. There's a bunch of other moves, like songs in the movie that were really good, but those are the main songs that I really liked because they were really, really good orchestral pieces. And Shiro Sagi does an amazing job. He does an amazing job in every series he does, but damn, this like this is like a really good soundtrack. Like I had more songs to pick out of this one soundtrack that I did 1.0 and 2.0. So yeah, really good damn good soundtrack. But yeah, uh, as for my closing thoughts of the movie, I don't know. And I've never been this unsure in my life. Honestly, this movie's... I have no idea. I, I don't follow the people who praise this movie, the, you know, hell and back, but I don't I don't necessarily follow the people who hate this movie and call it the greatest sin of Evangelion. No, I, I believe that this movie was weird in the sense that it, it was too much lead up. You know, it felt like it definitely was a lead up to something. But, you know, we have to wait until the next movie. And 3.0 plus 1.0 is out in Japan. It's been out. And spoilers are all over the internet. People haven't, don't have video spoilers. But I I would rather see it in video than read off of, off the wiki or something like that. I might just read off the wiki because I really am curious about what happens in the movie. And I, I want to see it for myself. Because I, I did get spoiled and saw the ending of the movie. And I won't say it. I won't say it at all. But I did see the ending. But as of uh, this video, I will just end it right here i will see well okay oh my god it's been an hour since so i've been talking uh, this is way longer than my other videos um but yeah i, I will see y'all next time for whenever 3.0 plus 1.0 comes out so see you all next time i hope you have a great day peace out and peace out even get 3.0 i really don't want to talk about you anymore but hey we need an explanation about a bunch of these things what the hell is wonder why is Vila doing this shit what's what happened in the 14 year time span that shinji was asleep um you know like what explain all this you know all, all the shit i had complaints about in this video i want an explanation all right kaizo out